We have just put a giant radiator inside this 1953 baggage car. My name is Benny Kirk. I'm a volunteer with Austin Steam Train Association. Um, I'm helping build this car. This is the radiator. As big as the door and taller, but we got it in there. Let's go inside, I'll tell you why and how. The first question is, why so big a radiator? This radiator is so big, a cameraman has to stand outside on a ladder just to get it fully in his camera frame. That's not why we got a big radiator. The way we got, the reason we got a radiator, there's a 50 on this blade, it says it's made for a KTA 50, 50 liter generator. This little guy here is a KTA 19, he's 19 liters, so you can see the relative difference in size. But if you've ever been around one of these big radiators spinning at full speed, it sounds like a cyclone. It's like a leaf blower blowing everything away. Scary as I'll get out. And I wanted our guys to be safe. It's still inside a plenum, but you know, there are times we need to come in here and I don't want it to be so scary. So my theory is if we don't have to spin as fast, if we've got a bigger radiator, we don't have to spin as fast. We don't have all the noise and scariness. So what I did is got this quarter horsepower electric motor off one of the uh, heaters that was inside this car. It's three phase 480, so that would be perfect. Just plug it in the way it is. And to my surprise, that quarter horsepower turned this about 250 revolution per minute, which is almost exactly what we need to keep this engine cool at about an 80, 85 degree day. Now, during the Texas summers, we're going to need more than that. So to compensate, I bought a one horsepower motor that'll get this up 300, 350 RPM if we need to in the summer. Now to adjust those speeds, we also went out and bought a motor controller that gives us two things. One of them, it gives us a slow start so it starts this out slowly and over 10 seconds time gets us up to about the 300 RPM we need for the air we need. Second thing it does, it regulates the speed. Right now it's set at 30 hertz, which runs this motor at half speed. So he's nice and relaxed. He's not stressed. He's not under any pain. We're not bouncing in the belts and grinding them off or anything. So we get everything we need with that one horsepower motor and a lot of lot of leftovers. To do all my analysis, we start out with this uh, temperature probe. We measure the temperature, the hot water going into the top, and the cold water coming out the bottom going into the engine. Um, we know about what we need to be keep this gener the, the generator cool. Once we get to the speed we need, I can measure the current going into the motor. Right now it's one amp per phase, so we know we're not really getting hot, we're not pushing any heat in this motor, and this heat motor is not straining. For the record, I have a tachometer and a reflecting tape. I can actually measure the RPMs of the fans, so if I need to make any adjustments, I can use this tachometer to step up a precise RPM uh, to get the airflow I wanted. Once I have that set up, I also have a velocity meter so I can measure the velocity of the air, uh, cubic feet per minute, coming off of the fan so that you know we know it matches this. And there's no offsets, no losses, no gains. Next question is, how did we get this thing in here? You notice it's about a foot and a half taller than the door and just barely one inch clearance on either side of the door. Well, while we had it out under the tree, we laid it down, propped up four corners, wrapped the chain crisscross, took the forklift while it's laying down on its face, and picked this whole thing up face down, carried it over here with the forklift, and then just very slowly and carefully pushed it through the door and set it down face down. In a previous video, 
you saw us putting the plenum up on the engine. For this to work, to be able to pick this up, we extended the plenum all the way around the radiator, built it up strong enough to put a chain hoist on either side, and then used the chain hoist to pick up both sides of the top of the radiator until we could actually set it up right and set it down. Once we got, the, got it up, we could just take the weight off, slide it forward and back until we got it to the position we want, give us about six inches clearance from that far door, not hit the roof over here on the top side, and then we marked and drilled holes in the floor. We run continuously long bolts from here all the way to the bottom, put metal, metal plates on the bottom to reinforce it and bolted it down in all four corners. So it's in place not going anywhere. Uh, when we're through with it, we took that part of the plenum off because it's not the exact size we need. We'll rebuild that in the future when we finish the plenum. We had a very exciting week. The Rippling Stream passenger lounge car uh, needed the air conditioners refreshed so they could get ready for this weekend and did not have power. So we said, hey, let's see if we could run it. So we put an extension cord on the end of the car, run it across track three over a flat car, plugged it into the front of the uh, rippling stream on track two, and the, tech, the air conditioner technician was able to power it up and do his complete charge and have the rippling stream ready for the consist this weekend. We are so proud of that power car generator. And I know you're gonna ask, how did you run it for three hours on a five gallon bucket? Well, we got another five gallon bucket and we hauled fuel back and forth and kept adding fuel to that power car uh, bucket until we got it to run for three hours. I wanna thank you for watching this video on the installation of the giant radiator into the Austin Steam Train power car. I also wanna remind everybody the Austin Steam Train organization is a nonprofit organization. All of the work we do out here is powered off volunteers, donations, and grants. If you would like to join the team, please visit austinsteamtrain.org. Bye.